It's obvious that the Velotrek Nomad 1 is a beautiful bike, but does its performance characteristics live up to its appearance? Well, we're about to find out. Just look at this thing. This is a beautiful, beautiful bike. There's no doubt that the design expertise that went into creating the Nomad 1 was nothing but top flight. But does the performance of the bike match the promise of the beauty? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do before I get into the features, and there's some great features of this bike that you're not gonna get on any other bike at this price point, we're gonna take it on a road trip to see how it performs because performance has to match the feature set. So let me get my helmet on and let's get out on the road. I want to do a throttle test to see if the throttle is matched to the level of power assist. Ideally, I should be able to get full throttle no matter what level of power pedal assist I'm on. So I already know that pedal assist one maxes out at 10 miles an hour. And it looks like the most I can get for throttle in pedal assist one is 10 miles an hour. So to get maximum throttle, you need to be in higher levels of pedal assist. Let's test the shifter to see if it's smooth. No problem moving up and down. No noise at all. And now we'll test stopping power. Ooh, swift. Stopping power test two. Instant. I love these hydraulic brakes. There was a lot to love on that short road trip and I can't wait to get this out on the beach for a more in-depth test of where I'm going to use it more often. Now the, the two things that just hit me in the face on the road trip were the advantage of having the 8-speed Shimano shifter and hydraulic brakes. With that 8th speed I was able to avoid ghost pedaling. You know that's when your pedals are moving but there's no resistance and you feel like an idiot. Well, on the Nomad 1, I could be in a higher pedal assist level and still have resistance, and the resistance gives you more control over the bike. And speaking of control, those hydraulic brakes are just awesome. And I'm amazed that they were able to include that feature in a bike at this low price point. Now, of course, the one thing I discovered on the road trip that I'm not a fan of is that the throttle is limited to the speed associated with each pedal assist level. So I can't get 20 miles an hour if I'm in pedal assist one and hit the throttle. It'll max out at the 10 miles an hour that's associated with pedal assist one. This could be an issue if you need a burst of power to move through a situation like going up a hill and you don't want to take the time to hit the pedal assist level. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the other great features of this bike. As someone who's getting up in age and has creaky bones, I've got to call out the fact that I just love the step through. It's so nice not to have to put my leg all the way over the seat to get on. It's just so great to be able to pop on and pop off. And this is going to be huge when I'm on an unstable platform like beach sand. Everything in this bike has been designed to be tough. And the one thing you'll notice is what you don't notice. There are no wires external. The controller that drives the motor and the pedal assist is not external. Everything is built inside. And that means it's protected. Because this is IPX6 rated, which means it can withstand a strong stream of water, which is critical if you're taking it into wet environments. Even the chain is a KMC high reliability, high reliability chain 
and the ring here is very thick and durable. So you can be confident that this is not going to fail when you go over a bump or hit something. I tell you, I really love the fact that you'll be able to mount this to a vehicle onto a hitch and not have to worry about the hitch hitting any of the control mechanisms that would be a huge expense to replace. All of this rides on a beautifully welded aluminum alloy frame with the pedals being aluminum alloy as well. The only thing that's missing that could make it even better is that there is no guard back here over the, the rear derailleur. I've seen that on other e-bikes, but that's a minor point. Well, let's review the features of the bike and let's start in the front. It's got four inch tires with a puncture resistant liner and heavy duty spokes that are appropriate for the class and weight of this particular bike. As I mentioned earlier, it has hydraulic brakes with a 180 millimeter rotor and adjustable front fork so you can tune it based on the terrain you're going over. Well, it's starting to rain. Let me get the battery done and then we'll do the rest of this a little bit later. This is a Tesla grade battery, which means that it has the capability to store 20% more power in the same density. In addition, it's UL2271 certified, which means that it won't overcharge, won't undercharge, won't short circuit, and it won't catch fire. I haven't seen that same certification on a lot of the other e-bikes that I've evaluated. I like carrying the key hanging from one of the cables so I don't lose it. They give you two, but here's the neat thing about this battery. When you look inside here, all of the electrical components are up here at the very top. There's nothing down here at the bottom. So if you get water that comes in here, it's gonna flow down to the bottom and you're not at risk of shorting out your, your battery. Everything is up here at the top. Any discussion of the battery has to end with what's its capacity, how does that translate to range? This has 14.4 amp hours of capacity, and that powers a 750 watt custom designed hub motor, which will get you about 55 miles of range and will tackle an eight degree slope, according to the manufacturer. Now it does have 75 Newton meters of torque, not quite as good as some of the other vehicles in its class, but that should be good to get you where you need to go. The one thing that you'll notice that is missing is this does not come with a rear rack. Now, they do sell a rear rack for, I think, $69. So if you want one, you're welcome to go out and buy one. But even if you went and bought it, the price point of this would still come in underneath some of the other bikes in the category. Recognizing that not everyone wants a rear rack, it's an opportunity for people to save that amount of money. Let's discuss a few of the comfort features that come with the bike. It's got a 220 millimeter seat, and I found that this was very comfortable at the default angle. You have the ability to change it if you want, but you probably won't want to. The, let's go look at the handlebars, and let's talk about some of the things up there. The grips are very nice. They're rubberized, and they have a wide back here, which makes it very comfortable to grab them. The Shimano eight gear shifter is located conveniently for your thumb and your forefinger to do the up and down shifting. The brake levers themselves are properly positioned and I love the angle that they're sitting at. Moving over, one of the unique features about the bike is that the thumb throttle is on the left hand side which should make all those people who are left handed happy. The negative here is that there's a little bit more of a reach to get over to do the pedal assist, particularly given that the throttle is keyed to the pedal assist level. It would have been better in my mind to have the pedal assist right here where you could quickly hit it and then hit the throttle to gain the additional acceleration that you wanted. The display is very clear. Even on a bright day, you're able to see this and it has different settings that are implemented by clicking on the power button. The default 
is to show your trip distance. Hitting it again shows your total odometer. Once again, average miles per hour. Maximum miles per hour, and you can see that it got up to 20.4. The amount of time, the number of calories you expended, and the power in watts that is being expended at that time. It's got the typical five bar uh, measurement. And the key thing here is when you're down to three bars, that means you're at 50% or below and you need to start heading back. The power assist shows very clearly and so you always know what level of assist you're in. You always start out in assist level zero when you turn this on. Finally, it has a bell. The control head also includes a USB port where you can charge whatever you need to. The bike comes with standard safety equipment. It's got a light that is nice and bright. It comes with reflectors that I have not installed yet and a rear light. The rear light that comes with it is not integrated with the battery and instead you have to turn it on manually to have it operate. The bike comes with reflective strips for both tires. So what's my bottom line on this? Well, the only thing that I guess I, I don't like about it, and it's overcome by all the things I do like about it, is the fact that the throttle is keyed to the speed of the pedal assist. I really wish that there would be a software update that the manufacturer could release that would free the throttle from the constraint of the pedal assist because there are times when you just want to hit that throttle and get a burst of speed to get out of a difficult situation. But other than that, this thing is a nice bike. The fact that it has hydraulic brakes and that eight-speed shifter to avoid the ghost pedaling, to me, that's huge. And it's less expensive than competitive bikes. So if you've seen anything that I haven't commented on that you can either call out as a positive or a negative. Please throw that down in the comments below. We'll all appreciate it.